Let's review an extremely high yield topic by doing some questions. Be sure to watch this video until the end to score extra points on your exams. A seven-year-old male presents with floating stool, weight loss, and a diffuse blistering rash over his patella. What will duodenal biopsy reveal? To answer this question, we have to know what the diagnosis is. Because this patient has floating stool, weight loss, and the diffuse blister and rash, then this is indicative of celiac disease. Patients with celiac disease have a maladaptive immune response to gluten. These patients can also have other autoimmune illnesses. Celiac disease is often associated with malabsorption, so patients can present with fatigue, weight loss, or vitamin deficiencies, especially the fat-soluble vitamins, such as vitamin A, D, E, and K. So now we know what this patient has, so let's go back to the question. It is asking, what will duodenal biopsy reveal? And the answer is flattening of microvilli and intraepithelial lymphocytes. So if you look on this diagram, the picture above shows you what normal villi looks like in contrast to the picture below, which illustrates how microvilli in patients with celiac disease can look like. So remember, once biopsy is done, you can find key findings such as villus atrophy, flattening of microvilli, crypt hyperplasia, or intraepithelial lymphocytes. Physical exam reveals red blisters over his patellae. What is the best initial treatment option for this patient? And the answer is a gluten-free diet. Patients with celiac disease have to have a strict, lifelong, gluten-free diet. So they can't have anything with wheat, barley, or rye. These patients also require iron and vitamin supplementation. Because celiac disease is a malabsorptive disorder, and they may be deficient in vitamins such as A, D, E, and K, so these must be supplemented. Despite being on a gluten-free diet, his dermatologic findings persist. What is the best next step? And the answer is Dapsone. Recall that Dapsone should be used with caution in patients with G6PD deficiency because Dapsone is one of the drugs that can actually trigger a drug-induced hemolytic anemia in patients with G6PD deficiency. So they can present with features such as jaundice and indirect hyperbilirubinemia. So remember, the first-line treatment for these patients is the diet. Of course, a gluten-free diet. If that doesn't work, then we have to give them Dapsone. So we've been describing this dermatologic condition, but what exactly is it? Well, it is called dermatitis herpetiformis, and it is a dermatological condition that is of course associated with celiac disease and can be tested on your exam. So take a good look at this picture. And remember that in these patients, red blisters that are sometimes itchy can present on the extensor surfaces. So on the elbows or on the knees. What other condition can Dapsone be used to treat? And the answer is Hansen's disease or leprosy. So Dapsone is used to treat this condition. Recall that leprosy typically has three main clinical manifestations, which are one, hypopigmented skin lesions, two, nerve thickening, and three, peripheral nerve palsies, especially the ulnar and perineal nerves. What is the most likely cause of this patient's weight loss? 
And this is because patients with celiac disease have fat malabsorption. So remember that celiac disease is a malabsorptive disorder. And if the terminal ileum is affected, they can also have deficiencies of fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. What other disorders can have a deficiency of fat soluble vitamins? Of course, the questions wouldn't be so straightforward, but the point I'm trying to make with this question is that examiners like to ask questions like this, like if a condition relates to another condition. I don't know why, but they just do. So the answer to this is Crohn's disease, cystic fibrosis, CNA disease, of course, and chronic pancreatitis. If you can think of any other conditions, be sure to comment them down below. What musculoskeletal complications can develop in patients with celiac disease? These conditions include osteoporosis, rickets, and osteomalacia. So like I said before, these patients can have a deficiency of fat soluble vitamins, one of them being vitamin D. So that explains why they experience most of these conditions. They also have alterations in calcium. What is the most common cause of treatment failure in patients placed on a gluten-free diet for celiac disease? And that is a non-adherence to the gluten-free diet. Which antigens are associated with celiac disease? So this question requires you to know about HLA groups and what exactly HLA stands for. So HLA actually stands for human leukocyte antigens. So the answer for that is HLA DQ8 or HLA DQ2. So how I remember it and probably everybody remembers it is that DQ is kind of like Dairy Queen, which sells ice cream. So that's why I have that ice cream cone there for you to remember. What is the most important oncologic association in long-term celiac disease? That is small bowel lymphoma or enteric associated T-cell lymphoma. This is very high yield to know. There are a number of conditions that can lead to a lymphoma. So celiac disease is one because it leads to a small bowel lymphoma. But let's look at some others. Sjogren syndrome can actually lead to salivary gland lymphoma. So recall that Sjogren syndrome involves dry mouth, dry eyes, and it's also an autoimmune disease that most commonly affects middle-aged women. So it can lead to a lymphoma as well. Hashimoto's thyroiditis can lead to thyroid lymphoma. As you can see, all these conditions that we discuss are autoimmune disorders and they can lead to a lymphoma. So, in summary, celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder where patients have a maladaptive immune response to products containing gluten. They can experience malabsorption, especially fat malabsorption, and this results in symptoms such as fatigue, weight loss, and deficiencies of fat-soluble vitamins. The best test to confirm the diagnosis of celiac disease is to do a duodenal biopsy and this can reveal flattening of the villi or villus atrophy and intraepithelial lymphocytes. So a high yield dermatologic condition that can present in patients with celiac disease is dermatitis herpetiformis and the best initial way to treat Celiac disease or all the manifestations of celiac disease, including dermatitis herpetiformis, is with a gluten-free diet. If that fails or the patient is not adherent to their diet, then we can give them Dapstone. But we have to be very careful in patients who have G6PD deficiency. 
because dapsone can cause a drug-induced hemolytic anemia in these patients, where they can experience jaundice and indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Celiac disease is also associated with HLA-DQ or Dairy Queen, the ice cream, 8, HLA-DQ2. And finally, an extremely high yield point is that long-term celiac disease can lead to an enteric-associated T-cell lymphoma. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell. And to continue learning more, click this video right here. Thank you.